Sakshan, how's it going? Hey, Sakshan, how's it going? Uh, it's going okay. How, how about you? Can you hear me? It's going, yes, I can hear you. All right. Again, all right, Google Meet worked. That's good. I was worried. I, I started to think, um, Agan and I just had a meeting. I started to think, oh, crap, Google Meet didn't work a second ago. It might not work for him this time. So That's good. It's working. Uh, let's see. Open the meeting minutes. Okay, okay. Guys, have a have a good weekend. Uh, no, my laptop is giving me some problems. Oh no! Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I was just I was talking to Hashim, and he said that his dual boot got screwed up, and I was like, ah, oh, that is never fun. You know? Yeah, I, my problem is kind of same. Oh it's yeah, it's getting very slow. Oh, jeez. Oh, so you probably need to wipe it and reinstall then. Uh, I don't know if I have time to do that. Oh, no. How's it going, Himanshu? Hey, hi. Well, yeah, okay. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say maybe you could just like, like uh, do Google copy, grab a server or something, but I don't know. I know internet connections can be rough. Um, Let's see. Yeah, that's that sucks. What's do you, do you know what's up, or is it just it's just all of a sudden being very slow? Yeah, it's suddenly very slow, and when I just train on images, it just hangs. Oh, jeez. Oh. That's why things are Linux been a little slow. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Weird. Um. Is your home on a separate partition? Uh, yeah, I partitioned like 300 GB for Linux in dual boot and uh, left the rest for Windows. How's it going, Sudarshana? Hi, John. Uh, it's going great. How's it going for you? It's good. It's been good. Are you going back to office anytime soon? Uh, no, not until the end of the year. We completely screwed up. I think I mentioned this a couple. Uh, we we're, we're talking about this. I can't remember when, but yeah, we completely screwed up our whole quarantine here in the states, and so there's no ch chance of us going anywhere anytime soon, um, or back to the office. That is, everybody's going back and doing all sorts of things, but but the more sensible workplaces that have people who can work from home have said you don't have to uh, or what well, you can work from home so i'm i'm hoping i quite honestly i'm hoping that i never have to go back to the office because then i just don't have to drive out yeah, there. actually some companies here like permanently made their senior employees work from home that sounds so they good have to work at home. yeah i mean it's just like it's a waste of a commute and when i go out there i just end up um like we we like we we've got a we've got a running running joke in our team. We sit in one of these cubes, like these these cubes where uh, there's like six cubes, and they've taken down the cube walls between them all, so we can kind of just turn around and talk to each other. And we've got a bit of a problem where like every week we'll spend several hours talking about various apocalyptic scenarios, um, and we've determined that that's sort of just like what happens when you're the paranoid security team. Um, so we lose a lot of time talking about weird apocalyptic scenarios, and, and by not being in the office, we, we get several more hours of productivity a week, So, plus commute time. Um, but yeah, so I'm hoping that they don't, they don't make us go back. Um, anyways, all right. So, um, all right, Agen, is there, what do you want to talk about this week? So uh, let me just also say that uh, I've been working the on... on the chat okay, the PR on the chatbot, so PR on... Uh, John, you're not sharing your screen. Oh, I'm not. Thank you. 
I am recording though for once I'm recording um, and I remembered actually to, to restart the recording so that Augen you will have a separate recording um, okay so let's see PR on chatbot okay and then Saksham yeah I was uh, working on image operations and descriptors and things have been a little slow for and I'm also I also wanted to talk about uh, convolu uh, neural networks mm -hmm. because uh, using like the traditional computer vision techniques we're not getting a good mm -hmm. accuracy yeah and it takes very long to train okay which causes my laptop to hack yeah yeah okay <laughs> yeah well we'll talk about that so let's let's also make sure we talk about um also, I'll be adding a pull request for uh, that change of using JPEG and TIFF files along with PNG in Config Loader, image Great. Config Loader. Great. So we'll be uh, PR uh, to change um, error for image config loaders. All right, Himanshu. And yeah, so I'm working on uh, using those operations to feed the data in TensorFlow. So I'll be opening up PR, uh, and we can talk about adding uh, more operations. Other than that, I don't have anything. All right, uh, this cool. week most slow. All right. And then Sudarshan, is there anything that you want to talk uh, about? No, John, I don't have anything in particular. Uh, cool. I just wanted to like join the meeting and find out what's going on. Sweet, sweet. Yes, so we'll actually, that's that's a good chance for us to, um, uh, let's recap where everything is at. All right, and we'll start with that one because that's always, it's always good to do. We haven't had a nice like, what is going on for a while. So did I get everything from everyone? Yes. All right, yes. let's see. And this is applicable to everyone, so I'm just going to make this bullet point right here. All right, okay, so um, actually, let's let's have everyone sort of go through and give a, give a status update on GSOC and where everything is at with that. So between projects, um, and then we'll go, we'll just go in the same order. So Agen, where's sort of, where's your, where's your project at? What have you gotten done? And uh, let's see, so let's just say, what has been done so far? And, and uh, where are you now? And uh, so where I, are you I'm going? done with the examples for the data flows. Like the final thing was the chatbot. Now I'll be moving on to the work on distributor orchestrator. And have you guys, I haven't checked your blog post in a while. Have you guys been doing, has that been going okay? Yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. more like my minor status update. Yeah, okay. All right, Saksham. Yeah, I'm adding image operations, uh, and this uh, this month will also go in adding image operations, and I'll try to finish. Everything. Well, so what have you done? What have you done? Start with what you've done. Uh, so I've added image operations, uh, directory source for reading images, and uh, and and um, uh, just image operations. Yeah, that's the main thing. Okay. Yeah. So. And the uh, next, I'll be start. Uh, I'll just be finishing uh, the image operations and adding uh, image operations from SK image uh, and SK image two. And the next thing will be to add uh, exa examples. And then we need to talk about uh, neural networks and those stuff. Okay.
also like uh, i'll be adding some custom uh, operations that use uh, that uh, use different cv functions not just uh, and like these the operations that i've just added only use one cv function cool so sort of helpers yeah the high level operation stuff i wrote in my great great okay um and then Himanshu. Yeah, so I'm done with the models, uh, the classification and question answering. Now I'm working on adding the operations. And then I'll be working on uh, documenting uh, anything that's needed and examples. OK. All right, cool. And then let's see. And then let's also sort of let's see uh, uh, progress towards three point zero point eight release. Um, compliance tasks almost complete. I have one, or well, I have twelve Word documents I need to edit and submit. Um, and then I'm pretty much done with that. And then, um, and then. We have, hey, we got to 800 commits. Sweet. Um, let's see. And then where is our milestone here? So, uh, milestones. Do any of these need to be attached to a milestone? I've been bad about project management. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. 3.8 release. All right, okay. Um, let's see. Let's figure out where all of these are at. Um, yeah, I wish I could just copy paste that. Okay. Um, okay, so open issues. Uh, so we've got model predict should take sources context um so um uh, sudhanshu is working on this open pr from sudhanshu um let's see need doc string and example usage for the data flow source so data flow flow source needs doc string and example usage um, channel config needs to allow for immediate responses so so for the um, deployment example uh, channel HTTP channel config needs to allow for immediate responses um, integration example is not working so and I've been poking at that so integration so let's see automating classification automating uh, those works were mainly due to the change from key like SRC variable to key so those are uh, fixed in that, that comment simplifying example comment Wait. Let's see. All right. So, what was? Let's see. Yeah. Uh, what did you say that? Uh, so I don't remember who someone reported that the example was not working. Mm -hmm. That was because of the change from SRC URL to key and key was not in backticks. Mm -hmm. So SQL was raising errors. Okay. So that was, where was that change? This stuff. Okay. Yeah. 
let's see, is that in a specific commit? Um, okay, yeah, here we go. Okay, great. Okay, we might want to just, let's see, uh, for simplification. Um, also contains fix needed for um, a key. Oh, you said that uh, you only had to write some bash scripts for it. Write some bash scripts for it? Um, yeah. You mean like... Uh, you said everything else is done and I, I don't know. You said you would take it. Oh, away. yeah. I was going to... Write some bash script. Let's see. Yeah. I believe, yeah, that's right. So, um, John, John, if I can spell my name. Uh, what, what are the scripts for? I didn't get that. Uh, what else is what? Like, uh, what were the scripts for? Like, I believe I was just talking what? about um, testing it and, you know, how we've been pulling out the, the we've been pulling out the, um, We've been pulling out the. Um, we were, I believe, what we were going to do was simplify this by um, writing like one operation, you know, that's just like in Python, and then mm -hmm. pulling that. Let's see. Let me just recap here. So, oh, John yes, was yeah. going to simplify by writing a single Python operation, which will. Um, yeah, which runs the prediction and insertion and into that. Yeah, because we were getting all um, we were getting yeah, all hung up on this massive button. flow. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Okay, and let me make sure that this is. Okay. So all right. So that and that that sort of covers. I believe that's all we need to do to get to the next release here. Um, let's see. Um, and then let's see. Uh, there was a couple other things that I noticed. Um, let's see. Specify instance name. Oh yeah, I think Saksham, did you do this one? We were talking about, oh, I guess I didn't post the recording information, but let's see, what was this? You were doing this as a part of your, um, uh oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, I asked you a question, I think. Yeah. In Gitter only, and I think you were busy, so I also forgot about this. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. So let's see. Okay. So are you going to do this one? Yeah, I'll do this one. So uh, can you look at the question I posted in Gitter? Uh, I don't see Just where it up, is. Up below the. Uh, oh, the target. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I didn't understand. Oh yes. Okay. I guess I, I missed that one. Okay. Um, basically, um. Well, so what I meant by this was, um, this is, I mean, it's probably something that we may, we, we may not want to do this, um, but the, right now, right, the, 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 the way that you would get something to a specific operation would you, would be, and not another one would be, you change the origin. So right now everything's origin is seed, um, and uh, right, so the the origin. So let me see. Let me. Um, oh. Um, all right. So yeah, the origin is by default seed. Um, and so if you want it to come from somewhere else, you have to specify a different origin. Um, and let's see, can you even do that? Actually, can we do that with the... Um, yeah, I don't think we... No, we can. Can we? Mm, no, we can't. We can't do this with the... 
yeah, we can't do this with the create command right now. Um, so yeah, okay, that's a problem. Um, we might need to change the create command. Um, so the the seed the seed um, flag the seed flag says like add these inputs um, under uh, like these these are the all of these go under they they just go under seed origin right they don't end up with another origin right it's just value equals definition and origin equals seed right and so you can specify different origins if you wanted to we have a place that does that um let's see um oh yeah the io usage um so in this one we had um we specified you know this is seed dot years for the key i believe because we had two keys or something um create feature mapping yeah key seed dot years or we were just trying to be specific i think um so uh, basically yeah so, so go for it yeah we only wanted to pass uh, we wanted to give it to uh, uh, seed only uh, because uh, we are having we are having multiple inputs so we decided on giving only one and another taking from the seed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah um so 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 right now with the create command everything ends up with the origin of, of seed right and and here we specified the origin is seed dot years right and that allows us to sort of say the key you know the key can only come from seed dot years um things of the origin of seed dot years um and so we're gonna we're gonna need a way we probably need to modify the create command um to i mean so what i was saying here is that we can modify the create command well okay this is I, I think I was thinking that the create command could do this already, but it can't. Um, so what I was thinking is that you could modify the create command either so that it sets the seed to a different value um, or to add this new target property. And the target property was sort of going to be like a, it's something, it's something that had been toyed around with as like a specific, um, you know, like, this input is only destined for this specific input or this input is only destined for this specific parameter of an operation um and uh and and that's i mean it essentially it's 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 this you get the same functionality as you would describe with seed right but you might say okay the target equals um let's see what was the example here like you'd have something like target and then it would be you know this as resize dot inputs dot decide it'd be pretty much the same thing here um only instead of like you know this is this is a definition um whereas we would have um you know this this would match the, when we put it in seed it matches the definition whereas if you put it in target it would match you know it wouldn't be applicable to other things that have the same definition because this definition name might be reused across multiple operations whereas if you put it in target it would be only for this specific operations input that is d size right um does that make sense yes yeah, so like how will this work for like i have to give like you have done hsv dot inputs dot code and gray dot inputs dot code well so so this is, I mean, this is more of, so that was, that, that meet, so that is more of what, what target would be. I don't know if that really makes sense in this case, um, because I think we might want to just do more, because if, so if you do the route of saying, like, what's the target, then we're adding another syntax for things, um, which, you know, while helpful is also you know, it gets like we've got a lot of different syntaxes for similar things, right? Um, so it might just be best to to make it so that we take the the seed um, and change that to like the origin flag, right? And then have uh, all of these, you know, all of these are maybe like you know, add another equal sign in there and have them be seed by default, right? Or if there's a second equal sign, then you assign it to that as the origin right um 
So, for yeah. example, let me just show what this that, would be. That makes sense. Yeah, that. So that might be right. We're gonna. This is gonna be a little bit of a heavier lift because we have to to modify all of this. But um, let's see. Oh God. Okay, so um, let's see. Yeah, okay. And then this was the syntax that we were doing for. Uh, we need to set instance names, um, and then this would become something like origin. Let's see, or let's see. This is more like this should probably be more like inputs or something because this is the create command. Um, although, let's see, we have the problem is now um, so yeah, inputs makes more sense because we are giving a value and a definition. That's how we give him the input. Yeah. So the only issue here is that now we have inputs meaning two different things. Um, so vim, data flow, CLI, data flow, plus, um, uh, do we have seed here? Can you add seed? Okay, no, you can't add seed inputs. Okay, this is perfect. Um, you can't add seed inputs to the run command. As you shouldn't be able to, so this is this works better actually. Now we have more consistent syntax. So when you have inputs for the create command, it's going to go under you know seed by default, or if you have another equals, you could say seed dot years type of thing, right? Um, so let's see, let's seed. Ha ha ha. Um, okay. So yeah, so let's take this. Um, and Okay. So so let's write about this a little bit. Um, so we're going to take the seed command, or take seed, so for the create command, for the create command, um, change seed to inputs uh, by default, um, have the origin, the input dot origin b seed so no modification required here because that's already the, the default value so that's already the default value um, and then let's see uh, where does it happen now? Oh, wait. Um, CLI, there's CLI. All right, so Let's create. Create to that too. Yeah. All right. Cool. So here. Um, yeah, I did the first part about the instance uh, name, and then I asked you a question, and then I also forgot about it. Okay. Um, so you okay? So you've got the instance name. Great. Okay. So um, let's also, and I guess we should probably split this into a different command. So. By default, have the origin input be seed. No. Um, uh, 
other uh, if there is a third equals then set it to then have the origin key in the following dict be equal be set to that value after the second. All right, and this unifies our syntax slightly, so and actually I probably should put this in a different issue. Um, so let's see. CLI data flow. CLI data flow create um, change seed to inputs. Okay. So, all right. Okay. And then this will, oh, and I forgot to add it here. So what was the specific example for this one? Was it, um, okay. It's these guys, right? So equals seed dot um, or equals gray equals HSV. And then you can say HSV inputs SRC, HSV inputs um, code. HSV. Um, so, do you guys see what I just did here? Basically, the code yeah. is coming from gray now, right? So that's the or, origin. Yeah, that's gray. The origin. Yeah, there needs to be a better explanation of origin. Um, the the this is also I wanted to, there. I don't know if there's an open issue, but. But for the HTTP server and stuff, it would be really cool if we can uh, want to change it so that um, the inputs coming from the client, um, like the inputs that you post up, they get labeled with a specific seed. Um, and, uh, and that way, you know, if you have some inputs that are only from the back end and some inputs that are allowed to be from the client, um, so that could that provides sort of, you know, a, a layer of security there. Um, all right, so let's see where we end this. Um, all right, okay. Um, and then I guess we'll dive right into the rest of Suckshom stuff. So. All right, so you wanted to talk about um, come on, replace, I want to replace link. Okay, so, oh, shit, what happened there? Okay. Okay. All right, so image operations and descriptors. So what do you want to talk about there? Uh, so the thing is that uh, we, uh, right now we have like sklearn classifiers and we are uh, trying to train uh, image data after extracting their features uh, on them. So the thing is that there, there, this is a this is the traditional computer vision techniques for image classification recognition stuff, and these are not giving a, a good accuracy. So we need like uh, new models or something like that, which are specifically for the use of classifying images. Cool.
So I wanted to discuss with you about this. Um, okay, so basically, yeah, so you want, we want some new models that are good for classifying images. Um, well, I mean, didn't, so we talked about, um, last week we talked about uh, that, um, was that last week or the week before, we talked about PlatML and how it had some, you know, we talked about Keras and those pre-trained models that it had. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about like, we can add transfer learning, uh, yeah. we can add already made models like AlexNet and ResNet and everything, VGG16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I believe the issue around those was that um, you had to, you know, take off some layers on the end and then slightly retrain it or something. I mean, Hamanshu, you said um, something about that, right? Or can we just scrape off the last layer and then use it? Um, yeah, yeah. So if we are using some pretend models, then that's the strategy. Otherwise, if you are training from scratch, like uh, Saksham is saying about training a CNN or something, mm -hmm. uh, then that's totally built in by ourselves. So we don't need to do, we, we, just, we need to create everything by ourselves, the whole yeah. architecture. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, and and um, in, in that case, I mean, you, you probably want to do, um, you, you probably want to do something from scratch here, I would say, because, I mean, we're, yeah. we're trying to be generic at this point, right? Um, so, uh, yeah, you probably need to go look at the CNN uh, stuff within, uh, well, I know, let's see, what would you, I mean, yeah, I think. I, felt, I always felt that Quintos was easier that Tensei. Yeah, I've, that's what I was about to say, yeah. So, PyTorch, I've heard PyTorch is good for CNNs, so, let's see. Uh, nope, that's not what we wanted. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm sure they have something here. They, they have sort something of called started, model but... vision or model vision. Mm -hmm. Like, they have lots of pre-trained models. Yeah, but so what if we aren't going to give a pre-trained model, right? So let's see. Like, uh, then it'll be like what uh, we'll have to add a plugin, like what we have, the current setup. Like we got a custom plugin, then use that as a model. Mm -hmm. The thing is that if we are adding custom layers, like we are creating a model from scratch, then we'll have to provide like a config for adding uh, more layers. Yes, and if we don't exactly. provide that, then it's the same as using a pre-trained model. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, and this is a good point here. It's. Uh, it's it's uh it, it takes a lot of data right um so let's see yeah i was thinking about this with in relation to the uh to the tensorflow models um and the uh uh what was the one you uh i'm not sure you added one where you had the layer definition um, um yeah yeah we did that template fix for that yeah yeah ex yeah so so we we probably want to add the ability for people to do stuff like that um but i mean this is sort of out of the scope of what you're doing right now saksham um this is sort of going to inflate your your amount of work you have to do by a lot um so i mean do you have so do you have what is what is like what is your use case here do you have enough um do you have enough i don't i can't like what what are you using a specific data set do you actually have enough um images to do this yeah there are a lot of data sets in kaggle i have like made a list and they have a lot of images like twenty five thousand and more something like that okay well in that case i mean it looks like this yeah i mean if if you have let's say well and this one only requires 120 training images um so I would say. Uh, Saksham, did you try using DNN classifier TensorFlow? Because you can use that to uh, classify the images. I think uh, that will be better than SQLN. Uh, if you if you are just doing this for the example. 
uh, I haven't tried the DNN classifier from the tenth of I think. Ah, uh, yes, that would definitely be a good one to try um, before mm -hmm. you go through and do this. Okay, okay, I'll take if a that look. Works, then. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, if not, then go implement a model to do, you know, go implement a model based off this at first here, right? And then, of course, these are going to be, um, you know, I believe these are how, um, uh, let's see. Uh, no, let's see. What are they doing here? Let's see. Yeah, they, like, modify the input. Yeah, they're pre-processing. Yeah. Where's their model? Oh. Um, this is all load data visual. Oh, okay. I was like, where is the model? Um, model the train, iterator over data. This train running last, last. Okay, so yeah, this is going to be what you want here. Or are they actually giving the model yeah okay so this is what you're gonna want here um, if you go to do this um, this is will get you started on creating a model so we can make it a new open issue and then you can you can do it if you decide you want to otherwise yeah I think definitely try the trans tensorflow classifier um, so let's see uh, Model PyTorch, okay, so new model for images. Okay, and we'll just put this up here, and if you want to do it, great. If not, if the other one works, that's better, right? Then you don't have to do this, but someone will probably want to do this eventually, so. Yeah, I'll take a look at We have a backlog PR, I think, based on PyTorch. Was that related to images? Uh, no. Um, let's see. I don't think it was. Let's see. No, it's it's iris classification. It's uh, totally, it's not on images. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's see. Yeah, so if you feel like doing that, great. Um, well, not if you feel like doing it. I mean, if it if it's going to be, if you need to do it, great. And then if you have extra time to do it, then go for it. Um, so let's see. Let's yeah, say. This is a long st uh, task. So if I absolutely need to do it, then I, will, then I will do it. If everything works fine with what we have in TFFML, then I don't think I need this right now. I'll take a look. OK, cool. Um, and then ways to make training faster. I mean, I would say you might want to, um, uh, you know, use GCP or something, right? I mean, that's going to also depend on your internet connection. Um, but that's, that's definitely going to speed up your training. Um, Let's see. Or I don't know. Can I, you even do? I tried with Google Collab, so it doesn't yeah. have CSS. It doesn't have what? I, I, I was not able to find a way to use the CLI for. For Code Lab. Uh, Google Collab, collaboratory. Uh, it's a Jupyter notebook based. Yeah. Can't you just do uh, like bang and then whatever? Let's see. I thought it was with a Y. Oh, yeah, it is with a Y. Um, where is... Uh, uh, also, Saksham, uh, you said uh, your system crashes when you're training, right? Is it crashing because it's running out of RAM? Like, how big is your data set? 
the data set is not big like the process the pre-processing stuff using the data flow source takes a lot of oh so like. yeah let's do okay so um pre-process like instead of pre-processing every time well, do you have to change the pre-processing every time? I mean, are you just doing training? Because if you're just trying to train different models, uh, if not changing data flow, then use edit command to save um, save uh, records uh, pre-processed records to a temporary JSON source um, that should probably save you some save you some time there if you're or are you doing I mean I imagine you're probably trying a few different models right and when you do tensorflow you're gonna try a few different models so you might want to um, you know merge um, data you have into JSON source then use edit yeah, I'm using the directory source and uh, last time like we were trying to debug why the save command a save uh, flag was not working for the directory source so okay. I need to take a look for that to, to save well, it like this so you can also just do I mean you can also use the merge command to uh, take the let's see do we have an example for the merge command Oh, we don't have an example for the merge command, damn it. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, no, that's the data flow merge. Um, didn't we do... Let's see. Uh, is it in the like original example? The, what, the a maintained example? I remember seeing it there. The main what one? The maintained example. Like the one which we are... Oh, yeah, simplified. the maintained example. Let's see. Oh, yes, it is. Okay, here. Yeah, okay, we need to get this in the CLI docs. Um, all right, great. Oh, yeah, and you fixed the source destination thing. Great. Um, so, yeah, if you did, I mean, if you did the data flow source as the source, right, or the directory source with the data flow preprocessing as the source and then saved it to a JSON source. So, like, what... Um, Let's see, let me just grab it from here. Um, where are those images? Okay, they're not here. Yeah, predict. Okay. All right, so if we go Examples, MNIST. No, not image data. Image file. Yeah. All right, so this guy so source all right so if we did merge Images equals df and then f equals json. So 
So we should be able to do this. Uh, isn't that like SRC? Should it be SRC equal DF? Um, well, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's whatever you want to label it as, right? So it's images in this case. If we changed all of these to SRC, then that would that would be fine too. Um, so let's see. Um, this file name images.json. Um, test allow empty and then read write oops tf15 and c wait a minute what <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, I think we might have the uh, merge command slightly off. Um. Base source, base source. Um, oh, wait a minute, it just did this again. Oh, well. Uh, all right, where did our... Oh, we just, like, lost that command, apparently. No, we didn't, okay. SRC. Oh, there it is. Merge. PNG was not found in JSON YAML. Right. Let's see. I feel like this should work for you. Operation implementation not instantiable. Okay, so what must be missing? I must be uh, not have all these installed for some reason. I noticed that it was doing this to me the other day. Um, oh, I think I did get clean and it wiped everything out. Type of ND array is not JSON serializable. Well, oh, this is because we're not on the right branch. All right, check it out, master. What? Okay, decode error. Oh. Yeah, so the, uh, the feature vectors are NDRA and JSON doesn't support that. Oh, yeah, so it got, let's see, yeah, it got, well, we should be able to, I mean, the export value should. The export value is only used in the pretty dash pretty flag where you're using, I think. We should be doing export value before we dump out to the CSV file. If we're not, then that's a problem too. Um, so let's see, where is create data flow? Gosh. Um, resize norm is from create data flow one and there's no flatten has this not been let's see what happened here why is this not I think you haven't like uh, have you updated the master branch because I added the flatten operation later. Um, oh yeah, okay, maybe it's because we need to Ah, it's because it was on the other branch when we did this.
Oh. There we go. Yeah, okay, so we need to be doing export value. Um, diff well, record. Okay, and so we need that here too. All right, and um, let's check this. All right, great. All right, so yeah, if you do this, then you should end up with a lower, um, a lower, you know, round trip time on training. Um, so let's see. Um, let me post this guy. Yeah, okay, I'll try this. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, it's always like I have almost reached the end of the data set and my laptop just freezes. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's a bummer. Um, yeah, I mean, try this and then we'll see. We'll see how that goes, right? So, because um, at least, I mean, at least you'll be able to do it once and then you'll separate the training of the model from the um, from the pre-processing, right? Um, so let's see. Um, uh, and then let me push this fix. All right, we're going to live dangerously. This should be fine. Um, Let's see if that breaks master branch. Hopefully not. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. And then I put a link to that. All right. Um, okay. Cool. Um, and then the PR on the chatbot. Let's see. And we got Sudhanshu too. Hi. Hello, Sutanshu. Yeah, how it's going? Good. Things have been going well. Let's see. Um, let's see. Um, chatbot. Okay. Um, All right, okay, I'm probably going to need to review this offline. This looks, let's see. Okay, yeah. All right, I mean, at first glance, it looks like this looks good. Um, let's see. Um, Chatbot run. Okay. All right. Yes, this looks it looks looks pretty pretty on target here, but I will review offline. So, yeah. Is there anything you wanted to say about it? Uh, no, no. Okay. Like, uh, I think I pushed the RST too. So. Yes. Yes, you did. Great. Um, and then there were a couple of things I also wanted to say, or well, I'll send you that offline. Um, let's see. Um, okay. So. And then Sudhanshu, um, I assume you want to talk about, is there, okay, so, so Sudhanshu, I assume you want to talk about that PR you have up. Is there anything else? Yeah, like, yeah, the only PR I, had to, I want to talk about. Okay. Um, okay. Sources, predict, method, take, sources, Context PR. Okay. Um, all right. 
So let's do Himanshu's NLP op operations and TensorFlow. So what did you want to chat about there? Uh, yes, yeah, so I was able to train the model uh, using the, uh, bypassing the data through those two operations and feed into the DNN classifier. So that part is done. Uh, and I, I will be doing the prediction and accuracy and after that I'll be uh, opening a PR. And uh, in TensorFlow, uh, I was thinking uh, we should migrate to tf.data pipeline because uh, we have been using the uh, way of taking the input of the mm -hmm. old TensorFlow 1 functions. Yeah. So we should now submit tf.data. Okay. Be that, better. Yeah, if you, I mean, so that sounds, let's make an issue for that. Um, so. Uh, that will be a bit big work, but uh, that will be good considering we are using images and everything now we have. So yeah. That will be so. Oh, tensor flow. Right, great. Okay. Sweet. And then I'll put this. All right, and then so next step, run prediction and uh, write uh, example, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, and I'll be fixing that transformer. They again broke something. So. Okay, cool. Great. Thank you. Uh, Fix and let's. I think. I think what we should also do on this is we should basically just pin the version on that thing. Actually, well, okay. So there's an upside and a downside. I'm thinking that before release, we should pin the versions um, because, um, yeah, once we release, then that's kind of that, right? Um, so, um, yeah, we should. We should. Um, let's see. And I think we should only update when there is a major release because they are doing minor releases and they are breaking a lot of things. So mm -hmm. okay. One major release and then we may change that in one go. Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, the pip is not supposed to upgrade on major release versions and it clearly did. And they obviously also messed, did something on the minor. So I'm wondering what's up with that, but we'll, we'll see, right? So, um, so we'll fix the one. Great. Okay. Um, before, okay. And then... Uh, before next release, we need to go through and make sure things have max version ranges. Uh, well, ugh, I don't know. See, I think the next release, we might just do a, a point. Instead of doing 3.8, we might do 0 0.4. And then, um, and then that way when there are issues, we can push a 0 0.4.1, um, and then we'll be working on 0 0.5, um, uh, because right now we can't really push like, a, I don't, it would break the semantic versioning if we if we pushed a like 0 0.3.7.1 um, to PyPy, but you can't overwrite a version that exists. Um, so like when there was an issue, there was an issue with something and I had to pin a version range on there and it was being weird. Um, so let's see. Um, all right. Okay. So that's all from you, Himanshu. Anything else you wanted to talk about? Yeah. Uh, no, not this much. All right. Great. All right. Sudhanshu, let's take a look at this PR. Let's see. Yes. So actually what's happening here is like uh, some of the tests are failing. And these tests are basically like TensorFlow Hub and Transformers tests. Okay, TensorFlow Hub and Transformers tests. Transformers tests are failing. So actually, I tried to like fix it. Like there was an LGTM warning out there. Like so, for that I have added the uh, memory source config, and then I passed the records. But like that also is not working. Okay, yeah, I saw I saw that changes there, okay. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So, and then let's see the logs. So, here's, 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 let's see. You think we're core, oh my god, sources, context, okay, so that's in scale. Um, that model, this is also in scale. Okay. So... Just gonna have the wrong type of declaration here so we don't fuck up all the lines. Or wait, um yeah, okay, I guess that would. There's this. Uh, let's see TX. Um Okay, well this one. Hey, wait. hey yeah. I'll be uh, dropping off now. Alright, sounds good. See have ya. A good have a good one. See ya. Bye. Bye. Um okay, so we're gonna we're gonna just make a note of that one, so we need to um, so, need to fix, um, uh, diff mouse slash skill slash my SLR, uh, model slash place import package name slash my SLR. Um, so this guy, um, so we'll also, also need to update tutorial, uh, new, uh, line numbers in new model tutorial, likely. So we will likely need to update the line numbers in the new model tutorial, so we're going to skip that one for now, um, because that's going to take too much time while we're got everybody on the call so so I could LR okay so this is just um, me not having that installed again um, model second so right, um, but that's weird because in true point not found in test sources test CSV um, let's see, but that's not really related. All right, okay. So this is test doc string. No resource context has no attribute with features. Oh, let's see. Yeah, because we need a sources, a sources with features. Um, okay, so uh, do high level. 
Um, yeah, my bad. So we needed to do, let's see. So, sources, um, which maybe brings up a good point of, uh, does that stuff just need to be in source? Uh, do from all source, source. Um, so we've got, like, some of these methods are only in sources. Um, well, no, they go through each source, don't they? Um, Self.records. No, sources, this doesn't have to do with... Uh, Sources context. This could be in every context. Um, yeah, we should probably just throw this method in. So this method is basically the issue is because this this method is in um, sources and not in um, um, just like the base the base class for source. Um, so or base source context. So this is yeah right here. Um, so we can throw we can throw that in this guy and then that that will that will work. Um, and then we can make this more sensible here. Um, okay, so that should fix our our doc string there. Um, but yeah, that was did you you uh, you you caught you caught that or? Should I explain more? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry, I was I went kind of fast there, so I just want to make sure. Um, so basically, um, wait, it still doesn't have it. God damn it. Um, sources which features models that train. Um, wait a minute. Model predict. Model SLR. Um, let's see, I'm confused. Where is this coming from? All right, so. Okay, let's just get rid of that one. Yeah, we should do that later. Different PR. All right, so we have this model, and we say um, let's see, and we say oh, where is the model predict running? I don't see that in the stack trace. All right, so we should be doing yeah, memory sources source sources source context. MCTX predict. That all looks exactly correct to me. Um, but the stack trace is saying. Stack trace is saying that it's calling sources uh, context. It's actually uh, showing that model context dot train source context. So. Oh, uh, so it's. it's predicting here. Okay, yeah. Oh, this is, oh yeah, oh, good catch. Yeah, we're in the train command. All right, so we're here. And, oh, it's because I think I moved the, uh, oh yeah, that's why. Because I took this method and I moved it up here. And so now it erred in the other location. Okay. Um, all right. Um, all right, fine, we'll move it back. Yeah, I was trying to be, you know, I was trying. So I was trying to take, I was trying to take this right. The issue is that with features does not exist within model memory the within the uh, memory source context. Um, but um, then, so I was, so I went and I moved it to uh, to the base source context. Um, and then it doesn't exist in sources context anymore because I moved it. Um, so let's see, can we just, uh, 
let's just uh, let's just leave it here because then and then we can just have this one also subclass from base sources context or base source context. All right, so the error end up looking almost the exact same. Can't set attribute. All right, okay, we're gonna give up on that. God damn it! All right, fine. We'll just wrap it in sources. Um, so yeah, so the issue here is basically that, um, so the issue here is that we have memory source, but the memory source and the memory source context don't have, um, they don't have, um, they don't have the with features method because that's within sources context rather than in the base source context. And sources context is not derived from from base source uh, base source context. Therefore, you don't end up with a with a uh, um, you don't end up with uh, with features. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, sources. so like uh, maybe like we can like change the source context like from memory source context to something else. Uh, well, so if we just wrap it in sources here, so basically if we just provide this memory source as the only source within sources, then it, it'll work. Um, so the other thing that I just tried to do was move the with features method into the base, the base, um, base source context. But then for some reason it was yelling at me. So we're just, I mean, we can just, the easy route here is we'll just wrap it in sources and then, and then call it a day here. Um, so and then if we ever need to do sources or if we never need to do with features then we can do that um uh, so let's see, get add the fml operation model um uh, uh fix with features error by wrapping in sources Um, and then then the main issue here was sources context um, And then the line numbers on this file have changed, so. Um, um, uh, it should just be very end here. Or we'll know all of them will have changed. Um, Okay. What else? What the other errors. Uh, yes, I, I I will fix that when okay. like it's done. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So let's see. Um, this. I don't know how I skipped that my SLR. Yeah, I'm wondering how that because I didn't see that come up either in the in the CI. Yeah. That's weird. Um, actually, wait. We may be able to dodge this source. text. Uh, no, we're still going to end up. Basically, you're only going to need to touch the... Actually, we can just do that now, because I think this will end up being now. We can only touch the predict command. So 109 to 126. There we go. All right. All right, so let's see. Test... see. All right, we're still getting errors on test seal, I predict. All right, that's all looking better now. Uh oh, wait, there was an error here. So no records with matching fe features. 
no, something is not thinking that a string is a something is thinking that a string is a list. Where is this from? Mm. Oh, that's my my fix to that was not correct. Because this is a list. Okay, uh, but first we're going to test this guy. So this guy was mad because the following features, no records had all of them. Um, test, test CLI, test predict. Um, Fake float records test case. Oh, wow. Okay, we weren't checking at this test case. This test case did not work, apparently. Um, yeah, none of these records have any data. Oh, joy. Yeah. Well, now we're finding yeah, out that, that this was one of the problems. Uh, okay. So, yeah, this is why this is a good this is a good thing we're doing this cuz this did not this was not doing anything. Oh, jeez. Uh, okay. So, we need fake um, which is which is fake feature fake feature isn't even used in here, so fake Um, and what is this even doing? It's fake predict. Okay. Um, float 10 0. What are we trying to do here? All right, let's just give it let's give it some fake data then. Let's see about that one again. There we go. All right, let's try all these guys again then. Okay, okay, fail, test merge. Um, what the hell? Incorrect data in CSV file. I wonder what's going on here. Test. Oh, because we updated the. Uh, yeah, we updated the the data. Okay. Um, test merge. Test JSON a CSV. Um, record key. Oh God! Wow, this this thing also had no data. Uh, it's probably because that fake model didn't. Yeah, it didn't care about the data. Um, so let's see, record key, um, let's just make this one. Okay. Um, There we go. Uh, key fake tag. Let's try that again. 
No. Okay, oh. Key tag fake. Alright, fine. Alright, great. Okay. I think hopefully we're closing in here. Oh god, we gotta get rid of this freaking this this thing. I wish there was a faster way to do that. Are we clean? I think we might be clean here. Yes, alright, there we go. Uh, one test skipped. Oh yeah, is that that test that we've been skipping? Yeah, I think we've been skipping that test because of that weird error with the event loop. Alright, okay. So it looks like we're cleaned up here. Uh, uh, scale model uh, change predict method. Yes. Thank you. A CLI fix um, lack of fake feature. Okay, fuck, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, actually, I just realized. I just, I can't remember when I found this out, but I found out that you can actually go back on these. Um, so let's see. Where were we with the other... So that hopefully will clean up the ones there. Um, then TensorFlow Hub Transformers, I'm hoping, was broken because of that pinning issue. And then Service HTTP. So, all right, this is great. I'm glad we're getting this done. Thank you for doing this. Okay. Memory source context. All right. Okay. Great. Similar issue. Um, and also in operation. So this should get fixed. Um, um, also in memory, memory the, the operation. So this should get fixed. And then internal server. Oh, what a lovely, helpful message. Um, there we go. Uh, also, I believe in. Also, no, this was going to take it has the same error. I think, yeah, that's the same thing. Yeah, I agree. I okay. Agree. Great. So let's just check those CI logs and hope that this is all that it takes. Um, sweet. Um, I guess we'll I'll loop back with you on this one. Um, and then we do need, let me, I can just add it to the change log while I'm here. Um, so, uh, fixed. Um, so, uh, models. Model predict. Let's now use sources with text with features. All right, this is going to be very helpful for people's error messages. <laughs> it's going to be great. All right. All right, was there anything else you wanted to talk about today, Sujanshu? Uh, no, that's it. All right, cool. And then we're going to, uh, were you thinking about doing the... Um... Yeah, I'll be working on the uh, accuracy plugin. Nice. Oh, sweet. While well, you're... XP boost, yeah. All right, okay. Cool, cool. Well, you're getting some heavy hitters here, sweet. All right. Um, yeah, thank you. Hey, thank you. Um, we'll be... On accuracy, or accuracy. All right, great. Um, 
Wow, all right, productive stuff. Great job, everyone. All right, um, anything from anyone else? Any opens? Okay, cool. All right, while well, we're uh, only 30 minutes over, wow, it's a miracle. Um, all right, so thanks, everyone, and I will uh, talk to you on Friday. Have a good week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.